Can Ozempic help us lose weight when we have PCOS? This is a very common question I've been receiving and so we're gonna see if I can answer that question today. But first, let's talk about what PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome is. And to start with the name, it's actually a bit of a misnomer in the sense that polycystic implies that there's always going to be cysts present on the ovaries when that's not actually the case. There's a number of cases where there are no cysts at all. So PCOS is a condition that affects women during their reproductive years and unfortunately can go all the way from adolescence until post-menopause. And at the simplest level, it is a condition where there is a hormonal imbalance and a dysfunction at the level of the ovaries. Now, what causes all of this is really not known. We know there's a genetic component, but as for other factors and things that contribute and lead to PCOS, it's really not clear. We see that there is some insulin resistance. Insulin resistance leads to higher levels of insulin, which leads to the production of more male sex hormones, which then can affect ovulation and egg release. As well, there seems to be some low-grade inflammation that can contribute to the other two things I just mentioned above. Obesity is another thing that can certainly be a factor, both that PCOS can contribute to and cause obesity, and also that obesity can make PCOS symptoms and such worse. Talk about a, a real pain in the ass. Let's, let's cause something just so we can, can make it more painful and, and more horrible. Like, I, I don't know what in what world that doesn't make sense, right? One important factor though is, is that while many women do have obesity and PCOS together, there are a number of women out there who have PCOS but don't have obesity. Some of the symptoms of PCOS can include things like irregular periods, so maybe missing your period or having a period that involves a heavier flow than usual. It can include things like acne, oily skin, um, male pattern hair growth, so you can have more facial hair or coarser, thicker hair on your chest, abdomen, arms. You could also get male pattern baldness or thinning of your hair. And some of the other things would be things like infertility, skin tags, or darkening of your skin or patches of your skin, particularly like in your elbows or groin area, kind of wherever there's like a crease or a bend, you could get a darkening patch of skin there that would look darker than the rest of your skin. And of course, we may or may not see cysts on your ovaries when we look at them via ultrasound. So definitely a whole bunch of symptoms that sound pretty darn unpleasant. And hey, if you're getting some value out of my content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. As well, check out the OG members membership side of my YouTube channel where you can get exclusive perks of being part of my OG members club. One of the main perks is that I do a monthly YouTube live for the OG members where you can bring your burning questions, concerns, what have you to myself and I will answer them in real time. We also got some other OG members specific content in the works, so you definitely want to sign up and join down below. Again, hit that subscribe button, don't miss out, and be sure to check it all out. So I've already alluded to a little bit of the interplay between obesity and PCOS in that it is kind of interesting. But to reiterate things here, obesity can commonly occur with PCOS. PCOS can lead to obesity and make it very challenging to ultimately lose and manage your weight. And obesity can worsen the symptoms that you might be experiencing with PCOS. And in fact, losing weight in some circumstances can help manage your PCOS symptoms or make them significantly less severe. And again, not all women that have PCOS are going to have an issue with their weight, and in fact, losing weight would not be recommended for those women. So with this obesity and PCOS interplay, what we know is that PCOS doesn't slow down your metabolism. That's not kind of how it's contributing to obesity and making your weight management problems more challenging. What we believe the more likely culprit is, is that PCOS and insulin resistance that comes with PCOS, together, those lead to appetite dysregulation and ultimately make it very hard to manage your hunger, manage your wanting and food seeking behaviors, and thus, when it comes to trying to lose weight, well, it's gonna be a heck of a lot harder. Further, with some of the hormonal fluctuations, we're gonna see things like fluid shifting as well as bloating and other symptoms in that realm of things that are gonna cause the number on the scale to go up and down and likely lead to a great deal of frustration. Now, in terms of treating PCOS and looking at managing your weight, one of the first line things, regardless of what we're trying to do, is going to be optimizing your lifestyle, so making you as healthy as possible possible. 
So that's going to be things like getting in as much activity as you can, making sure that we're getting a good quality nutritious diet with plenty of protein and fiber, little things like that. And we currently have medications such as metformin that can help to manage PCOS and can also help with the obesity side of things in that it's going to help to manage insulin resistance and for some individuals metformin can lead to weight loss. But what about some of the newer medications like Ozempic? These GLP-1 based medications we know can help us to regulate our blood sugars, they can decrease insulin resistance, as well they can act within the reward centers of our brain and decrease our appetite, decrease our hunger, and decrease those food seeking behaviors. Ultimately all of this together can help and support with weight loss. And I just so happened to have come across a little study by Carmina and friend that looks at using semaglutide in individuals that have PCOS. So what they did in this study is they took semaglutide, aka Ozempic, aka Wagovi, and they used a dose of 0.5 milligrams once per week. They then gave the semaglutide to 27 women that were struggling with PCOS and obesity. These 27 women had previously failed at a lifestyle modification type program, so looking at just increasing activity, monitoring calories, and that sort of thing, they were ineffective or unresponsive to that so they were then moved to this group and given the medication and over the course of this study they were not really given any specific parameters in terms of diet and creating a calorie deficit or activity parameters or anything the authors basically just said eat your regular diet and get plenty of activity in and hey if you're currently struggling with your weight and you're looking for an additional coaching or support program check out my links down below you can book a consultation with myself to ask your burning questions one-on-one -on -one. as well you can also shoot me an email and we can discuss longer term coaching options that might be good for you and getting the support on your weight management journey all the links are down below in the description as well as in the first comment so be sure to check them out so what exactly did Carmina and friend find after three months the average Average weight loss was about 7.6 kilograms from the baseline weight or about 8.9% loss from baseline. Unfortunately, 6 out of the 27 women were considered to be unresponsive and what that meant is that they didn't lose greater than 5% of their baseline weight in that three month period. The 21 women that were responsive and lost greater than 5% of their baseline weight got to continue on semaglutide 0.5 milligrams for another three months to see how much further results they might see. And interestingly, the women that didn't respond to semaglutide 0.5 milligrams, they seem to have a higher BMI at baseline. And so this might indicate that a higher dose of semaglutide would be needed for these women to ultimately get a response. And so in total, at the end of the six months, the 21 women on average lost about 11.5 kilograms. And most of the women had a return of normal menses as well. They had a reduction in their insulin resistance as well as an improvement in various other markers such as their cholesterol levels and blood sugar levels. And none of the women experienced any significant side effects other than some mild GI symptoms such as nausea, heartburn, and that sort of thing. Overall, it was very well tolerated and no women dropped out of the study. So, based on this study, it looks like semaglutide at a low dose can be quite effective at helping and supporting with weight loss as well as managing PCOS-based symptoms. Now, this was a small trial and they didn't have a proper control group or anything like that, but nonetheless, the results were very promising to see and it was even better to see that there was no major side effects experienced. And so semaglutide and the other GLP-1 medications may certainly be an option for helping women with PCOS to manage their weight. The one big caveat of this all though is that many women that have PCOS and are struggling with their weight, they're going to be within their reproductive years. And so in that situation, if you're going to take a GLP-1 medication like Ozempic, you need to be on some kind of hormonal birth control or birth control in general to prevent pregnancy. This is especially true for women that have PCOS and may be experiencing infertility and have been trying to actively get pregnant. The reason for this is that the GLP-1 medications are currently contraindicated in pregnancy as well as with breastfeeding. And in some cases, when we start managing PCOS with these medications, we can get a rapid return of fertility. And so we need to have some kind of marker or mechanism in place to prevent that pregnancy from occurring. And so again, these medications certainly could be used in helping a woman with PCOS manage her weight, but we're gonna have to have the right barriers in place to hold off on that pregnancy 
until we've had a chance to utilize the medication, have the medication clear the system, and then you can begin trying to have or trying to become pregnant. Ultimately though, these are all things that you need to discuss with your specific care team to figure out what are your specific needs. So that is it and that is all you beautiful people. To conclude here, PCOS is definitely a complex condition that can contribute to and be worsened by obesity. And it certainly looks like the GLP-1 based medications could be a potential option that we use in supporting women in this situation to help manage their weight and manage their symptoms. So I hope that answers your question about PCOS and the GLP-1 medications. As I said, be sure to talk with your care team and figure out what might be the best options for you and your health. And as always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below so that you don't miss out when another episode comes out. As well, check out the OG membership side of my YouTube page where you can sign up and become an OG member with myself. And each month I provide a YouTube live to the OG members where you can bring your specific questions, concerns, and I can answer them in real time. As well, check me out on all my other channels at the official Dr. Dan as the handle. And as I always sign off, please remember that it's gonna be those small tweaks that lead to those massive peaks.